A majority of the world population lives on low-lying lands near the sea, some of which are predicted to be submerged by the end of the 21st century due to global warming and the rising sea levels. Now, a paper coming out today piqued my interest, tracking California's sinking coast from space, implications for relative sea level rise. Now, satellite surveys show California's sinking coastal hotspots. And let me give you a quick geology lesson, if I may. <laughs> a majority of the world's population lives near sea level, which is bad news. And that's because the propaganda you've been fed is not preparing you for the reality of the future. The reality of the future is not of catastrophic sea level rise, so to speak, but a catastrophic event of sea level washover that will destroy many, well, most of the population. And that's coming in the 12,500 year cosmic catastrophe event, which is coming sometime in the next few decades, any time now. But the mainstream wants you to believe in catastrophic global warming and catastrophic sea level rise which they've been spouting for decades and not a single inch has been determined on any coastline to be affecting any humans ever. The only time they report on it is when a storm surge or a hurricane or something or a flooding event happens. Let's go back to Sandy. Hurricane Sandy that destroyed many of those coastal communities in New York was because they had improper drainage systems in place not because of climate change, because of infrastructure failure, period. Let's get to the brass tacks. Now, here's the paper. Oh, here's the article that piqued my interest, which led me to the paper, which is why we're here in this podcast. And let's talk about it. Many people think that sea level rise is happening catastrophically and it's going to destroy cities <laughs> around the world. And this is the image we get from the mainstream or the lamestream that is meant to scare the out of you. This comes from Hollywood, not from reality. Now the most relevant quantity for assessing the impacts of sea level change is the community in the communities at that level is relative sea level rise. Many people don't understand this. Relative sea level rise is actually what we're measuring, which is the subsidence or the basin flexor of the region. So you're either going down or coming up as a landmass, which is where we build buildings. So if we put trillions of pounds of weight on a bunch of trash like Manhattan Island, over time, it's going to go down. It's going to smash that trash and it's gonna appear as if sea level rises. That's called apparent sea level rise. So you just learned something. Now, using precise measurements from the state-of-the-art satellite-based infometric synthetic aperture radar, INSAR, we can now detect land surface rise and fall with millimeter accuracy. And an Arizona State University research team has for the first time tracked the entire California coastline to the reality of people. Now let's talk about the reality of sea level rise. In 1898, here is sea level at low tide at the Statue of Liberty. And at 2007, low tide is lower than it was, well, anyway. So there's your catastrophic sea level rise. There's actually been a drop in the low tide position in my opinion, over 100 years. Now, here's the information coming out from the University of Arizona research team. They've identified local hotspots of the sinking coast in the cities of San Diego, Los Angeles, Santa Cruz, and San Francisco. And those red squares that you're looking at, those are areas that are falling into the sea now, 
The combined population in these regions is up to 8 million people exposed to rapid land subsidence. That means the land is pushing down because of all the weight we've put on it. Who will be at a higher risk for flooding during the decades ahead is very simple. You look at this map and you look at the red zones. The results were published this week in the issue of Science Advances. The research team included graduate students with lead author M. Blackwell and faculty Shakranda Oshawa and Susanna Wirth, all from ASU School of Earth and Space Exploration. Now, Ian e. Blackwell had a keen interest in the geology, and as Blackwell began graduate school, the application of INSAR drew them to pursue the project. INSAR uses radar to measure the change in distance between the satellite and the ground surface, producing a highly accurate deformation map of the entire surface of the Earth, which mainstream climate scientists are not utilizing because it goes against their nonsense. Right here. Land subsidence can occur due to natural or anthropogenic processes. Anthropogenic processes would be putting, like this in Manhattan, 50 trillion tons of debris, which we call buildings, on top of a trash pile that was built up in the 1600s. Yeah, so that would cause the land to be squished down over time, which it is doing. As of 2005, approximately 40 million people, that's a lot of people, were exposed to a 1 in 100 year coastal flooding hazard. Now, this has a little bit to do with subsidence and more to do with cosmic rays increasing, as you know, if you're a channel watcher. So what we have is a multiplicity of effects, geologic, anthropogenic, meaning we've put buildings on surfaces, and we also have cosmic rays in increasing flooding. Now, flooding will increase about 10% of the projected global gross domestic product within the U.S. Isn't that crazy? These exposure estimates rely on projections of global average sea level rise and do not account for vertical land motion, which is why they're doing this study. More for insurance purposes, not for scientific purposes. So what we're finding is that the real science coming out is so that insurers can insure you properly. This is not being uh, released to the mainstream because it goes against the narrative. Where some places are going up and others are going down, they don't want you to know about that. Now, areas of land uplift include north of San Francisco Bay, which is rising about five millimeters a year, and central California, the same rate. But going forward in the decades ahead, the coastal population is expected to grow to 1 billion people by 2050. Due to the coastward migration, the future flood risk that these communities will face is mainly controlled by the rate of relative sea level, not catastrophic human anthropogenic anything. Now, the combination of sea level rise and vertical land motion is that exact figure. It's vital to include land subsidence into regional projections that are used to identify areas of potential flooding for the urbanized coast because the fear mongers would lead everyone to believe that they're in danger and they're not. Now beyond the study, the ASU researcher team is hopeful that others in the scientific community can build on their results to measure and identify coastal hazards more broadly in the U.S. And around the world based on science not fear it's that simple tracking California's sinking coast from space and the new data sets we get prove that catastrophic global warming is not causing catastrophic sea rise anywhere like the mainstream purports but it is in fact affecting limited areas due to subsidence or uplift. So once you get the knowledge in your cranium to attack the cabal that is global warming, 
That's a boo. Straight and simple. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when you have the knowledge of what actually is happening on the coast. Some areas of land are rising, some are falling. And that results in relative sea level rise. But overall, take a look at this. There is nothing catastrophic happening anywhere, ever. Remember a decade ago when the Micronesian islands out in the West Pacific, they were claiming that they were going to be inundated? Well, just five years later, they proved that those islands were actually rising up and not falling down. They were gaining land, not losing it. Someone needs to be held accountable. That's why our channel is here. You decide. Follow the science or follow the idiots. <laughs> We're all going to die eventually. Yes, and they're right on that. And that's a boom. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. The most important person is the person that shares this video. Click on one of the other boxes that are now appearing and you may learn more. Be safe. We love you. And that's boo to Nala.